Welcome. This is Dr. Ralph Esposito. Because we decided on the methylation uh, health area, we see the homocysteine genomics. And these are all of the genes that are responsible and involved in the homocysteine genomics. And you can see here, you have CBS, you have MTRR, you have MTHFR, and these are all very familiar uh, SNPs or genes that are responsible for the elimination of homocysteine, recycling of B12 and folic acid, along with other nutrients that might be involved. On the right-hand side here, which we see, it'll provide you an exact information as to what homocysteine is. And this is important for the practitioner to understand, but also saves time for the practitioner so the patient can read this and understand what is homocysteine, what are the things that have impacts on homocysteine. And then we have this, the genes here, which are displayed in a pie graph, which can tell us uh, how much influence that these genes uh, and these SNPs that the individual has will have an impact on their homocysteine. So we can see here, that they have, a, uh, they have several CBS SNPs, and you can see that they're heterozygous for many of them. And they have no risk for also several others. And then they have some benefit for few of these CBS SNPs. As we go through, you'll see the CBS SNP in the report, and this will make much more sense as you'll see each and every single one of these SNPs. The farther that this uh, arrow comes out, it indicates how many SNPs that we have for that area, as we'll see moving forward. As you can see for MTRR, this individual has a few SNPs that are uh, homozygous risk for MTRR, which may impact their ability to recycle folic acid and B12 beyond MTHFR, uh, but they also do have some heterozygous, which are at a lower risk. And the uh, legend here actually tells you exactly what that is. So as we move down, we look at MTHFR, and we see that there's several SNPs here for the MTHFR gene. And the, base, the box here basically tells you that many of these SNPs are, actually all of these SNPs are heterozygous or have no impact. So therefore, we can easily assume that this individual might not have any major MTHFR issues. And we can look through here and we see that the risk allele is A for this particular SNP. It's a risk, and the individual has only one of them. And as we move down, we can see this one, the risk allele is G, it is a risk, and the individual has neither of those, therefore that would be part of the gray boxes. And each subsequent uh, SNP will give us more information as to what exactly that means for the patient. This is solely informative and does not give any, any action to the patient but it provides the practitioner and also the patient with a little bit more information. We do not expect the patient to go home and completely understand all of this. That's why it's up to the practitioner to actually explain all of this, and this puts it in a form that is providing data and evidence to the patient so that they can understand your reasoning behind your treatment plan moving forward. As we can see, Mr. Smart Owl showed up again here, and the new concepts are all things that are new uh, that ha were presented in the uh, information here above of MTHFR. And it explains to you what a heterozygous is, what a mutation is, proteins, methylation, polymorphism. So you spend less time explaining to the patient what is a mutation, what is an amino acid. Uh, you just give them the information, explain to them what the next plans are, and this allows them to understand that in a more detailed level. This will only show up once, so therefore, if heterozygous showed up again in a subsequent SNP, the owl will not pick that out again as it's already been covered, but it'll pick up new words that have not been covered already. As we move down, we see several other SNPs, such as betaine homocysteine 5S-methyltransferase, which is also responsible for methylation. And again, it gives you information as to what the actual SNP or gene does and how it impacts certain conditions such as ADD and ADHD. Please keep in mind that this does not indicate that the patient does have ADD or ADHD, but it gives you information on uh, effects that it may have on adrenaline or norepinephrine and phosphatidylcholine, which may have an impact in ADD or ADHD. That's why it's very important that the practitioner read the whole report and become familiar with the uh, verbiage in the report so that they can be prepared for some questions that might be coming through as the patient may ask 
such as I don't have ADD, what does this mean for me? And again, this uh, particular gene with the various SNPs are not only indicated for ADD, but also have impacts on methylation, which is what you would explain to the patient. The owl shows up again, homeostasis. This is a new word. It did not show up prior, but it's showing up now. So this provides you more information, uh, more information for the client. Then we have MTRR, as we saw in the uh, graph above, and it provides you with information as all of the different SNPs that we have here for MTRR. And you can see that there's several that are homozygous for risk and several that are heterozygous, which are a lower risk. And by looking at this here, we can see they're homozygous for this particular SNP, which is a risk, and it gives you key words that it may be associated with, such as neural tube defect, or lower serum folate, uh, folate acids, or reduced risk of PSA elevation. So some of these might provide benefit, so a reduced risk of PSA elevation, but some of them may not, such as lower serum folate levels. And we understand that because MTRR, uh, which is responsible for the recycling of uh, folic acid and works, in, uh, works congruently with MTHFR, uh, can explain a lot of the times why MTHFR is not the only SNP or the only gene that we must pay attention to. And we can explain that to the patient based on uh, this particular outcome. But please keep in mind, you can see that several of these are heterozygous and several, several of them um, are not a risk for the patient or we have no data on it, uh, which is not the limitation of the program. It's a limitation of the literature. So you can explain to the patient uh, we don't know what this actually means because there has been little to no research on it. We only know that they exist and that they're associated with this particular SNP. And then lastly, you can see several parts in here how uh, medications that deplete vitamin B12 can affect MTRR and such as corticosteroids, metformin, um, allopurinol or euloric and other uh, cholesterol lowering drugs. So if your patient is on some of these, and they do have a uh, homozygous risk, then you can say, you know, this might be something that we want to pay attention to. Again, this is actionable, but it, it's required for the practitioner to explain this to the patient uh, in the visit. And you should not expect the patient to go home and understand what MTRR is and if they take antacids or corticosteroids such as Cortef or, or, or even metformin, which is actually a very common medication. As we move down, you'll see several other SNPs and the same process occurs. And again, you'll see the allele shows up again and that's a new word. And then as we saw prior in the upwards graph, there are a lot of SNPs here for the cystathionine beta synthase SNP, which is responsible for the elimination of homocysteine. One of the cofactors here would certainly be B6 and it educates you and the patient on that here. And then you can see that you have several beneficial SNPs, which, or one beneficial SNP, which was here. So there's no reduction in transsulfation uh, activity. So that's a good thing. And then you have several other uh, heterozygous SNPs, which may have a lower risk of impacting cystathionine beta synthase activity. Um, it does not decrease function uh, as several heterozygous SNPs uh, can actually be functional, be functional uh, throughout life. It really depends on the environment, as we discuss in several other tutorials about epigenetics and epistatic relationships. So what you can see from here is that perhaps this individual may not have issues with CBS. So if they do have elevated uh, homocysteine levels, then this might not be the number one area that you want to focus on, but certainly something that you want to support moving forward as uh, nutrient uh, insufficiencies can certainly impact these, the activity of these enzymes. And this is repeated for uh, all of the other uh, SNPs. And you can see here, there's only one SNP for MAT1A, and that will show up as a, uh, as a lower uh, progression on the outside of that graph as we saw above. So again, that graph that we saw here just gives you an idea of what are the particular SNPs uh, or what are the particular genes that we wanna pay attention to? As you can see, MAT1A really only had one SNP, might not be something that we wanna focus on, but hey, let's really focus on CBS and MTRR and MTHFR and perhaps even BHMT, which would be up to the discretion of the practitioner. 
as we move forward, we get through the SNPs and then we get to the macros. 